Coming up on CPTV, schools fight back against vaping companies who market to students, CPHS launches the new I Am CP campaign, and last week's football game versus Michigan City determined whether CP finished with a winning regular season record. CPTV is up next. Hi, I'm Sarah Frey. And I'm Zach Jones. Welcome to CPTV. Kirsten Robinson will have your five-day weather forecast, and Ramsey Harkness will bring us CP Sports highlights. Here's what's happening at Crown Point High School. It's no secret that vaping is a growing epidemic in America. Vaping devices are not approved by the FDA, and some have led to the deaths of 33 people. Companies are targeting students through TV, print, and social media advertisements. The number one selling vape company, Juul, is now at the center of schools lashing back. The Olathe School District in Kansas is currently suing Juul, saying that it is costing their district money in efforts to police the use of smokeless products, and that Juul is intentionally marketing to young students. Pretty evident when you go into any of our schools, if you ask our, our high school principals what are two of their top issues that they're dealing with, vape comes up as one of the top two almost every single time. I mean, when you've got limited resources, we're, we're having to, to allocate effort and time and, and those types of things to, to help support our students. I understand it as a business strategy, but I think it's kind of disgusting that uh, you would try to um, addict our children knowing the health consequences. CPTV's Jenna Mylosh is in the studio now to show us how vaping is viewed here at CPHS. In a student's everyday life, there's a constantly increasing number of things to keep track of. Tests, projects, and extracurriculars are all things we as students have to worry about. However, many administrators feel being the target of misleading advertisements regarding vaping is not something anyone in school should have to be concerned with. I do not believe that the rules are effective. I think that in a few cases, maybe, but too many kids get away with it too often especially with how long the lines are for the bathroom and passing periods. There was a student that had to be sent to the hospital, um, you know, because of vaping effects. Um, it's a scary situation. Um, so I, you know, it's not something that you like to see done. I feel like you have to show them real examples because if you just uh, make an ad or something, it's not as realistic to them and they've seen the same thing with smoking and they're addicted, so it's not going to help. It's like any other business, they're trying to sell as much product as they can to make the most amount of money. Whether they are doing it directly towards younger individuals, I, I can't say yes or no, but from my standpoint, I would, I would believe so. They're trying to make it just... Um, I don't know, more enticing to the younger generation. No, I don't believe what the school does currently is effective. Um, not that I endorse vaping in any way, but um, logistically, there's no way for the school to completely end vaping without invading privacy or enacting any sort of rules that would really be possible. You know, the concern that I have as a parent is that if you see something, this is not cliche, say something, because it's, this is up to all of us. Yeah. It's up to staff, students, like, we don't want that in our school. And while the staff is strong, like, you know, they're doing supervision, they're doing all these things, it's ultimately, like, it belongs to all of us. Um, so I'm really hoping for, for my own personal children and all the other children here at school that, like, and the adults that, like, we stick together in this. We don't want this in our school and that um, we're going to report it if we see it and we're not going to tolerate it and we're not going to um, just look the other way. We're going to say something. Nationally, more than one in four teens report the use of a vaping device in the last month. And with this number steadily rising, the number of fatalities and hospital visits are also on the rise. Here at Crown Point High School, consequences are in place for any students who bring e-cigarette devices or any paraphernalia associated with vaping onto the premises. Whether or not vaping trends will go down as the spread of information increases is still debated, though one thing is for certain. If these trends continue to rise, the health of teenagers across the nation will be left in the hands of these multi-million dollar companies. Zach, Sarah? Juul controls 70% of the vaping market. 
The company has announced that it will no longer run TV, print, or digital advertisements for its e-cigarettes. As you may have noticed, red and white banners with hashtag AMCP now hang from the walls around the school in an effort to showcase the unique students at CPHS. CPTV's Kayla Dill spoke with English teacher Aaron Carter to understand the goals of this campaign. The new 2019 administration is making many efforts to connect with the Crown Point student body. One of their new ways is with the campaign hashtag IMCP. This encourages students to find their bulldog pride and helps them discover their individuality within the Crown Point community. The IMCP campaign is just um, an effort to kind of show that there are many different types of students that go to Crown Point. Uh, so I don't know if um, there's that typical student that people think represents Crown Point, but the IMCP is just to show that there are many different types of, of students. The idea is that students can use it in all different types of contexts, and um, at the end, it'll just show that, hey, there's not just one type of student at Crown Point, that Crown Point's pretty diverse. Regardless of how you see yourself in the Crown Point community, we can all acknowledge that we have our own Bulldog pride. For CPTV, I'm Kayla Dill. CPHS has introduced a new parking policy in which students are permitted to park in either lot, rather than having both a junior and senior lot. Here is CPTV's Ryan Costello with more. A new parking policy put into place here at CPHS is getting rid of the junior and senior lots and becoming first come, first serve. And we wanted to see how the students and staff reacted to this new change and whether they like it or not. Uh, the parking lot rule I think is not my favorite because it should be how it was last year with it separated with juniors and seniors. I mean yeah I don't think it's not gonna affect too much I feel like but I mean I feel like most of the seniors are just not gonna be too happy about it but I mean it works for my grade because I mean we get to park closer if we're here first. We get a better parking spot out, out of school faster, we get out of the parking lot faster. It takes about a good maybe 15-20 minutes to get out of the parking lot after school so I feel like it might help but then again I don't know. We'll have to see how it works out. <laughs> I like the change in the parking policy because it gives me the freedom to park wherever I want or wherever is most convenient for me. Students and staff had some interesting thoughts about the new parking policy change. For CPTV, I'm Ryan Costello. Temperatures throughout the region have slowly been dropping over the last few weeks. No doubt we're headed for winter. Here's CPTV's Kirsten Robinson with your forecast. The temperature this past week has dropped drastically. However, we will see some precipitation in the next few days. Let's take a look at what you can expect for the rest of the day. It will remain cloudy and windy throughout the day as we reach the high of 59 by noon. And at 3 o'clock, the clouds will persist and temperatures will hold steady throughout the day under cloudy skies. The cloud cover will persist throughout the night, and tomorrow the high will be 55 degrees with showers before 3 p.m. Over your weekend, we will be in the high 50s, and Monday we're looking at highs in the low 60s. That's your weather forecast. Stay warm, everyone. Zach, Sarah? Thanks, Kirsten. It looks like a gloomy week ahead. A lot going on right now in CP sports as few fall sports teams remain in their respective postseasons. Here's Ramsey Harkness with your CP Sports Update. 4-4 four four Crown Point football team took on the 4-4 four four Michigan City Wolves last Friday night here in Crown Point, looking to end the regular season above 500. CP went up quick on the Wolves, 14 zip in the first quarter, on junior running back Matthew Walters' 85-yard touchdown run and junior quarterback Will Pettit's 55-yard touchdown pass to senior wide receiver Tyson Casey. The Michigan City Wolves and head coach Phil Mason made adjustments in the second quarter, to get two scores and head into the half, not at 14. In the third quarter, Pettit threw a jump ball 34 yards downfield, which fell right into David O'Toole's hands as he dove across the goal line, putting the dogs up 21-14. Wolves junior Jonathan Flemings scored midway through the fourth quarter on a one-yard run up the gut, tying the game at 21, but fear not. The dogs would eventually score again late in the fourth, putting the Bulldogs up 28-21 on a 53-yard touchdown pass from Pettit to seal the win and allow the dogs to end the regular season with a winning record of 5-4. CP is off this week for the first round of sectionals, but will travel to Lake Central a week from Friday for the sectional semifinal against the 3-6 Indians. The Crown Point volleyball team continued their hot streak and won their eighth consecutive match in a row, this time against the Valparaiso Vikings for the sectional championship. The Lady Bulldogs didn't drop a set, winning three straight, 25-12, 25-16, and 25-15, advancing to 28-6 on the season. The team's next match comes against the 27-7 Munster Mustangs on Saturday, 
at LaPorte at noon. Both the boys and girls cross country teams competed in regionals at Lemon Lake this past Saturday. The boys team won the regional matchup with five runners placing in the top 25. Final scoring had Crown Point winning with 55 points, Lake Central coming second with 83 points, and Lowell coming in third with 88 points. Juniors Quentin Bach and Cole Simmons placed third and fourth respectively with times of 16 minutes and 38 seconds and 16 minutes and 50 seconds. The girls placed third behind Lowell and Lake Central, topping CP's 59 points with 43 points and 46 points respectively. Senior Maddie Russin finished second with a time of 19 minutes and 27 seconds, and junior Jalen Burgos finished third with a time of 19 minutes and 34 seconds. The boys and girls teams will both be advancing to semi-state at New Prairie High School at 10.30 a.m. And that's it for sports. Picture retakes will be this Friday in the community room from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yearbooks and senior ads are currently on sale through the CPHS website. The Interact Club is hosting their annual Halloween Dodgeball Tournament next Tuesday. Teams can sign up six to eight players, costing $5 per person. Costumes are encouraged. Here's a reminder that next Wednesday we will have a half day for all students, so CPTV will air on Tuesday during resource. That's it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in and being with us. Remember, you can view all of our past episodes on CrownTownMedia.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at CrownT Media. For Ramsey Harkness, Kirsten Robinson, and all of us here at CPTV, I'm Zach Jones. And I'm Sarah Frey. Take care.